Welcome back, everyone. I'm the Bella Gamer, and today we have the Assassin of Assassin Mechs, one of probably the most interesting mechs in this Mishimano line, and honestly, a favorite mech of many people here who play Lancer. Do you want to see Dark Souls in your mech game? Do you want to see the ultimate Assassin mech and how it brings fear to its prey? Then today we're going to be talking about the Morning Cloak, a striker frame and probably the striker of all striker frames. Now, I will say this goofy thing right here, this is a sword and it's actually a terrifying sword. It is not exactly what it appears, but we'll get to that as we get into the license. First, let's go ahead and take a look at the stats of the Morning Cloak to show you exactly why. This is a mech to be feared. All right, so I think you can already see some very interesting numbers, especially in this middle column right here. Let's take a look at evasion 12. That's insane. I think that's the highest in the game, if I'm not mistaken, which means the Morning Cloak is an insanely difficult mech to hit, and you should absolutely invest in agility when using this mech. Another pretty crazy thing on this mech is for a Smith Shimano mech who tend to be a little bit more on the technically advanced sides, their E defense is abysmally low. That six is kind of nutty, and I think it's a, it's a compensation for its insane evasion because, to be fair, most weapons in the game use, you know, evasion as their primary two-hit stat. So having a high evasion means less likely to take damage, but the E defense is something that if you're bad at it, there's certain mechs out there or certain enemy types that can just destroy you. Now this mech also does not have any good armor, but it does have average HP. So it's not at least going to go down if the enemy has smart weapons, but the enemy has smart weapons, a big core feature of, this mech is kind of useless. Now, with a lower than average heat capacity and a higher than average sensors, this mech is not meant for a lot of strain. It's meant for taking a, a cautious approach to combat, only approaching foes when it knows it can deal with them quickly and having a massive sensor range so it can hack enemies, do lock on all kinds of things before it goes in for the strike. Now, its repair capacity is also really low, so you really don't want to take damage as the Morning Cloak, and its speed is higher than average, meaning that it is perfect for waiting on the outskirts of combat, hiding until it's the right time to strike. This is the Assassin Mech of all Assassin Mechs, and it has a save target that's average and a system points that's technically below average, but most mechs have around six anyway. All right, so let's take a look at its traits. The hunter trait here is absolutely nuts. Its major feature is that when an enemy is alone, it deals a D6 bonus damage on hit with a melee attack, has to be melee, if the target has no adjacent characters. So this is the backline assassination maneuver, essentially. This is a, a trait designed to get into the backline, predominantly artillery style enemies and to merc them because artillery mechs are, are typically out in secluded areas outside of the normal field of play. So this mech is designed to hunt those kind of enemies specifically. And this also makes this mech incredibly good on one-on-one -on -one duels. And honestly, adjacency is not super common. I mean, in a battlefield, does it make sense? to group everyone up together when everyone has, you know, exploding military shells? No? Then yeah, this trait goes off all the time. In addition to this, we have the biotic components, which gives this mech a plus one accuracy on its agility and saves. If it wasn't obvious that agility is what you needed to use on the Morning Cloak, then uh, I guess here's your clue, because Agility, it should be your absolutely main thing, and then I would probably go with systems, maybe engineering, depending on what kind of weapons you're using. For the mounts that we have here, we have a flex mount and we have a main ox mount. Now, main ox mount is, I, I, I've messed this up in the past before, so I'm making recompense. 
Probably one of the best mounts in the game. It lets you have both a main weapon and an ox weapon on the same mount or two ox weapons. And you can see here, there's a lack of really heavy firepower. Now you can have two main weapons, which is not terrible, but anything heavier than that and the mech is going to crumple. It's as sturdy as a wet uh, a cardboard tube you put your toilet paper on. So having a bunch of different ox weapons, melee weapons. I mean, this mech is designed really to be in and out of combat really fast. So you actually want, even though it has benefits for a melee style of play, you're going to want to have some range options as you're strafing and keeping out of danger. So now we can talk about the slipstream module, the core power for this mech. Now it gives you an insane passive ability, blink space jump. So Let's go ahead and read it. Blink Space Jump is a teleport that lets you go 3D6 in any direction, but if you would teleport into an occupied space, it ends immediately and you cannot use, you lose the full action used to do this. Now, if you roll the same number three times, you disappear until the group rests, at which point you reappear. So yeah, right off the gate, we have a very fun teleportation mod. If you roll the same number on 3d6, which is a very small percentage, but it does happen quite a bit. I mean, there's like a whole game pretty much based on this, right? Uh, yeah, it's very interesting. It's also a full action, which is something I'm not necessarily sure I like, but it is its passive effect. So as you can see here, it is designed this way to be able to teleport where it needs to go. This thing is designed to get into really terrible places for the enemy. And the best part about it is this is in addition to your move. So you can move after you use your blink space jump and you're good to go as long as you don't roll three on the same thing. And, and this is not actually you're going to use a ton. So I wouldn't even worry about the whole, you know, disappearing until your group rests kind of thing. This is a very fun ability, but its core power is even more interesting. Stabilized Singularity is an active protocol that you can see right here that allows you to, for the rest of the scene, whenever you move or boost, you teleport in addition, which means your mech does never, like almost never provokes Overwatch unless you're intentionally making a mistake. And even then, no, it, like, yeah, because any boost or standard move you make, so this is a very slippery mech. This is a mech that's very hard to get your hands on. And honestly, if it doesn't want you to hit you, you really don't get a choice. The license adds to this and its license is absolutely nuts. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, first up, Fold the Knife. And you know how much I love weapons in the first rank of a license and Fold the Knife is really, really cool. And honestly, if you're playing a melee mech or any mech that kind of weaves in and out of combat, a skirmisher, then this is probably going to be a really good pickup. Now, it is a knife that has a threat range of one, which is not bad. A D3 damage, which is a little small, but for an auxiliary weapon, that's pretty okay. And on a critical hit, you may teleport two spaces in any direction after the attack resolves. This is not only good for evasive use to get away from an enemy, but also for flanking purposes, allowing you to get behind the enemy, making it where if they wish to move, they have to go either another direction or try to move through you. The folded knife is an insanely good weapon. And in addition to all this, it has accurate. So you get a higher chance of critting with this weapon because you roll an additional D6 when you attempt to hit an enemy with it. That is really insane. Now, it's not for damage purposes necessarily. It's okay for that, but obviously there's better use for your firepower. But on your main ox mount, you have on the morning cloak. This is a pretty good like secondary melee weapon to utilize just in case something goes, well, incredibly right, or just in case something goes incredibly wrong and you need to attempt to get out of combat. The Vijaya rockets, which I actually looked into this, my instinct was to say Vijaya, but no, it's Vijaya, is a really, really good, my favorite launcher auxiliary weapon. These are like your mounted shoulder rockets, and they're like almost kind of homing. They're not homing, they're not smart weapons necessarily, 
but they are accurate and they have a range of five. This is perfect for strikers because you want to keep a medium range for most of your weapons anyway. And especially for the Morning Cloak, whose whole job is to literally jump around the battlefield, attacking enemies in the back line, and then backing out and then shooting rockets at it. Really good. The first rank of Morning Cloak is probably one of the best value buys for so many different builds in the game. Honestly, it's, this license is insane. At rank two, along with the Morning Cloak, we get the Hunter Logic Suite. And this is probably the major horrifying part about the Morning Cloak. So let's go ahead and take a look at Stock Prey. So the first part of this Stock Prey is you use this invade and the enemy treats you as invisible until you, they damage you. Now, only one enemy can be inflicted with this at a time, but for an assassin, that's perfect because essentially as long as soon as you get within 15 range and you have line of sight to the enemy, bam, stock prey, they no longer can see you. If they attack you, they have a 50% chance of missing and that only goes away when they hit you. That is utterly horrifying. No artillery mech is going to be safe from you. And not only that, but artillery mechs in general have difficulty when trying to strike. Granted, they do area damage. So that might be a thing, but still, this is horrifying. And this not even actually the technically horrifying part of this particular system here. As we see, Terrify is literally the second part of this particular system. And the, it, all right, so what it does is you infect a mech with terror until the end of their next turn, they are impaired and they cannot make any voluntary movements that bring them closer to you. This is actually kind of funny because this kind of actually plays into the Morning Cloak's big weakness. It actually doesn't want to be attacked. It has insane evasion and it is very likely to avoid any, you know, messy parts. But, you know, if you're getting too close, it's going to stance up and it's going to horrify you as the, the pilot in the cockpit is seeing a projected horrifying image of the morning cloak. And the very really cool part about this particular system is in Lancer, no mech really has a set design. And as a Lancer pilot, you have the ability to adjust your mech however you want. If you want to change the boreal in the valley dancer looking ass style of the morning cloak into like a dark night or something you can go full guts technically with your design look for the, especially because smith's mono they love anything that's super humanoid and very artsy i guarantee there would be a smith mono like mechanic who would make your mech look like guts if you really wanted to for two system points you get two perfect systems or invade specifically for your morning cloak and honestly for a lot of different mechs as well this is really good i mean imagine a caliban the little cannonball that they are just running at you invisible knowing that you're about to be hit by a pint-sized freight train that's terrifying and terrify works on so many other styles of mechs as long as you have a decent like tech attack bonus it's pretty good the second system we pick up at rank two is Singularity Motivator. And this is essentially just an insanely powerful reaction for just two system points that when your mech takes damage, you can teleport for free for a D6 spaces. Now you can tell that the Morning Cloak already has a lot of variable teleports. It never teleports in exact distance. And this actually plays into the lore as the singularity warping tech that it uses for its teleportation is somewhat unstable and very experimental so that being the case this makes perfect sense and honestly even one hex away is more often than not enough to save you from some of the worst like melee attacks in the game as melee damage melee weapons typically have higher damages on average due to the necessity of getting close and now, as typical, before we get to the third rank here of the license, I'm going to plug the channel. So if you're enjoying this kind of content and you want to see more, leave a like. This gives the, a higher chance other people get to see the content. And in addition to that, subscribe because I do all kinds of tabletop content 
not just Lancer, but if you love Lancer, then we do tons of Lancer content. We also have a Discord linked in the description below where you get to meet all kinds of people who are interested in playing TTRPG. And anytime a video goes live, you will get a notification unless you mute the channel. But anyway, let's go ahead and get to the juicy part of the license with the rank three of the Morning Cloak. So the variable sword, you know, that kind of wiry looking fencing sword that the Morning Cloak have, you know, this one right here. The win with the weird orange tip for like a safety tip was so strange. The variable sword is actually an invisible sword. Now, <clears throat> that that orange tip leads down to an essentially a mono wire. And this weapon has insane range. It's a threat to main melee weapon that does only three kinetic damage, which which is a little weird, honestly. It's it's strange that it doesn't do a ton of damage. But when you match it with the Morning Cloak's already Hunter trait that allows it to attack enemies in the backline and deal an additional D6 bonus damage, and the fact that it does an additional D6 bonus damage on crit, and it's an accuracy weapon, and it's a threat to weapon, this is where it really starts coming together. Its damage is not great, but the great thing about it is you get up on the artillery mech, you're in close range, it might not be even able to hit you without blowing itself up. You're incredibly likely to hit it with your bonus accuracy. And if it moves to get away from you, it's going to provoke Overwatch. So this weapon is actually pretty scary. And not only that, but you can use this to fence an enemy at just the right range. Since your mech has so much speed to work with, especially if you invest in more agility, if you know how fast an enemy mech is, you just have to keep just out of reach while you're fencing them off, slicing them to bits with your variable sword. Variable is so funny too, because technically it's so not variable. There's so like the kinetic damage is just three every time. It's very consistent for a variable weapon. I absolutely love the variable sword. I think it's really good. Is it the best melee weapon? Maybe not. I think that the Morning Cloak itself can benefit from a style of play where it gets into an enemy at the back line and eliminates them very quickly, so high damage weapons. But the variable sword style does allow it to have, and because it's accurate as well, and this mech is just insanely precise in everything it does, I really like it. I think it's really good. It really plays to the fantasy of the character, and I would love to see a, uh, I would love to see really cool designs with the Morning Cloak in mind because like its style of play is so cool so interesting i just i absolutely love it and the last system we have here is fade cloak which is very interesting because it's essentially a intangible system that allows you to walk through walls a ghosting system as you were so when you activate it as a quick action you become intangible and when you are intangible you can move through obstructions but you cannot end your turn in them now, you can't interact with any objects or characters in this way, which means you also can't be hit. And it doesn't say you actually go invisible. You just become intangible. So enemies can shoot you and they'll be like, why can't we hit you? Is this some kind of illusion created by some kind of tech action? Which, you know, is not far from the truth, honestly. Now, at the start of your turn, though, it's variable like everything else in the morning club. You roll a D6 and if you get in the lower 50 percentile, one through three, you come back to real space until the start of your next turn. On a four and higher, you remain intangible. And at any point, you can end this as a quick action. So typically how you want to use this particular system is you start off the combat, you identify your enemy, and you use your hunter logic on them so that you can become invisible. And then you activate your fade cloak so that you can get to them as quickly as possible with your insanely speedy mech. And then on the next round, because they can't do anything to you, you either just pop back into real space anyway, or you deactivate it as a quick action and then skirmish, maybe overcharge. And you can always activate this again, as because deactivating it doesn't count as like the unique parts of the action system. So activating it, you can do so again if you overcharge, making you 
impossible to hit for another round. The fake looks really good. This is a skirmisher's wet dream. It's so beneficial. And in Lancer, if you're unaware, unless you're doing open battlefields on like desert planets, if you're in an urban setting, the ability to move through obstructions is insanely powerful. The fake cloak really blends in perfectly with the morning cloak, but honestly, it is a license that plays into so many different styles of mechs. And for two system, like none of these were even that expensive system point wise. So the morning cloak's honestly a little juiced if you ask me. And that's going to be it for the morning cloak of very good license. Honestly, if you're playing a skirmish style mech of any frame, you're going to want to look into the Morning Cloak because it has so many good things. Maybe not for damage purposes, but for literally everything else. And if you want consistency, I mean, literally every weapon it has in its license has accurate, which just makes it insanely hard to deal with as an enemy. So I forgot to do this last time, but we're going to be looking at the Minotaur... I, I didn't forget to look at the mentor. I forgot to tell you guys what mech we were looking at last time. So next time we're going to be looking at the Minotaur, which is a dual frame license. So another two parter here is or not two part, but another one that has two frames to look at. The Minotaur is incredibly interesting. One I know one of my friends particularly really likes. If you like a, a hacker mech that messes with dimensional space, and is maybe a little bit bigger on the inside, then this is gonna be the video for you. But that's gonna be all for me. Thank you all so much for watching. Good luck with your games. Lead the bad luck to me, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.